Hi, I'm Carrie McKee, and in this video I'm talking about scientific abstracts that exaggerate or misrepresent findings in some way. The information I'm going to cover is based on my experience as an author and reviewer of scientific papers, as well as the literature on scientific writing techniques. If you like what I'm doing, please subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Today I'm going to focus on the abstract, which is an important part of a scientific paper. The abstract should accurately reflect the problem studied, the approach used, what was found, and why it's important. Unfortunately, some abstracts include misleading statements that do not reflect the actual findings of the study or their importance. Some refer to these distortions as spin or hype. For example, an abstract may claim an experimental effect when the results were not statistically significant or even when no statistical test was performed. Or the abstract may claim or imply a cause and effect relationship based on correlative data. The abstract may overgeneralize the results to other systems or situations that were not studied. Such distortions may be intentional or unintentional. Novice writers may inadvertently commit this type of mistake, not knowing any better, or may do so deliberately in a naive attempt to make their paper sound more important than it is. In this video, I'm going to cover some of the common types of misleading statements that find their way into abstracts. These are hypothetical examples, but are based on problematic abstracts I've seen as a reviewer. In this first example, the abstract says that the study showed a difference between two plant species. However, the statistical test reported in the results section indicated that there was no significant difference between species A and B. The growth rate of species A at 5.5 centimeters per week was arithmetically greater than that of species B at 4.3 centimeters per week. So the statement is true in that narrow sense. But a non-significant statistical test means that the abstract gives a false impression of the outcome of the study. Obviously, the authors need to report their findings accurately or rerun the experiment. Authors may make this mistake when they find themselves with negative results that contradict their expectations and decide to say in the abstract what they think should have happened instead of what did happen. They may rationalize their actions by telling themselves that they would have found a difference with a larger sample size. Here's another situation in which an author reports different linear trends, perhaps seen in a graph, but failed to conduct a statistical test to determine that the slopes differed from each other. The correct approach is to conduct the relevant statistical test. Related to this is the case in which the authors fail to point out negative results that are important to the overall interpretation of the data. Here, the authors leave out the fact that a third species, species C, survived equally well in gaps and in the shade. Perhaps they thought that this negative finding for species C was problematic and omitted mentioning it in the abstract. In fact, by reporting both positive and negative results, the authors provide a more accurate and more interesting picture of the outcome. Another type of distortion occurs when authors claim a causal re relationship based on a correlative study. This type of distortion can occur when one factor is observed to vary in relation to another factor in an uncontrolled setting. Such a pattern may reflect a cause and effect relationship, but could just as easily happen because both variables are responding to a third unmeasured factor. For example, the observation that tree mortality increased with increasing abundance of an insect pest might suggest forest dieback was caused by that insect. But correlation does not equal causation. In this case, variation in soil moisture could have caused different degrees of tree stress, which in turn led to changes in plant tissue chemistry that attract insects. In such a situation, the author should avoid implying a causal relationship in the abstract. 
Another example is an abstract that emphasizes a statistical difference that is not biologically significant. Even though salinity was significantly different between the two sites, the statement conveys an inaccurate picture since a difference of two parts per thousand salinity is unlikely to have an effect on plant species distribution. The revision acknowledges that the difference is not biologically significant. Depending on other results, the authors may want to focus on other factors in the abstract. Another common exaggeration seen in abstracts is an overgeneralization of the findings from a limited data set to other systems that were not studied. In this hypothetical example, the restoration study involved just one type of salt marsh. Extrapolating the results to all wetland types is inappropriate. The authors should limit their summary statements to the type of system studied. A final example of distortion in abstracts is the use of overly positive or negative language in an attempt to make the research finding sound more exciting than it is. In this hypothetical example, the authors use superlatives to describe their research. Other positive superlatives include amazing, creative, groundbreaking, innovative, novel, and outstanding. Negative words such as apocalyptic, catastrophic, disastrous, or ruinous may also be used to elevate the importance of a problem that was studied. Be sure to select the appropriate term to describe your research. In most cases, neutral terms are the best choice. This revision conveys the information using neutral terms. To sum up, researchers are under a lot of pressure to publish and some may be tempted to exaggerate their findings or overstate the implications in the abstract. They may feel especially pressured to emphasize positive findings and neglect to report negative data in the belief that this enhances their chances of publication. Now, there's nothing wrong with writing your abstracts to put your work into the best light possible. But in doing so, it's prudent to be as accurate and honest as possible within the word limit afforded abstracts. Thanks for watching and leave a comment if you have a question or opinion about how to write an abstract.